Hi guys. So it's been three weeks since our beautiful little boy Moosey arrived with us. Just thought we'd do a little video to keep you up to date on his progress and where he's at. often ask in my job to help people out with their children when they get new puppies so I thought I'd involve our kiddies today and just show you what they get up to with the puppy so we are going to do some clicker training and we're going to show you how we're starting off with his recall a little bit of whistle training lots and lots of self-control stuff so if you'll see us doing lots of sitting and waiting we're going to teach him to be a good boy so that he's not reactive to lots of external stimulation. We're also going to do a feeding regime. We're going to let him meet Sheba and I think he might even get in the pool and do a bit of swimming. So we're going to do a few exciting things, take you on a little journey for a little while and hopefully you'll get to see exactly what Moosey gets up to in a day. He's a busy boy, aren't you? Off we go! boy regarding the food it's probably important just to note at this point I'm just spending a little bit of time sat here with him while he's eating so essentially we don't put too much pressure on the dog while they eat food is one of your biggest bargaining tools with them and it's it's the most important resource that they have so we don't want to put too much pressure regarding them worrying about competition but it is important that they get used to you being around so just the occasional touch watching for a waggy tail making sure he's comfortable making sure he's not rushing his food You'll notice that I'm using a slow feeder for Moose. He was one of nine in a litter, so that meant that there was always going to be competition around food when he was having milk from his mum. And obviously once the weaning process started, that was done really well, and he had his own bowl. But obviously having his siblings around, the dog is very aware that competition is around. So just when he arrived here, it was a bit like he'd never eaten before. So he was literally inhaling food left, right and centre. So this is a specific puppy one. Uh, the adult dog ones would be too much for him so these prongs in here are just not too distressing for him because obviously you don't want to create frustration when they're trying to eat either so the most important point to note with a dog something that you might have heard a bit old school you used to be told to take food away from the dog when they're eating never ever do that if you were going to sit down to a big sunday roast dinner after doing lots and lots of exercise and i came along and snatched it after you'd had two mouthfuls you wouldn't be very comfortable with me being around after that so it's just important to have this presence hands bring good things they don't take food away but no more than that so he gets to finish his meal in peace and quiet the other thing that's really important at this stage is you always wait for the puppy just to walk away from the food so you never put a challenge on them. I usually call Moose back in and just ask him for a sit so he watched me take the bowl away. Come here Bubba. Sit. So we use every opportunity just to bring some training in. Sit. Wait. Good boy. Well done. So all the training's done organically around everyday things that you need to do with your puppy. It just saves you loads and loads of time and it's the best way to train the dog anyway because you're doing these things. I mean, he's being fed four times a day right now. So it's four opportunities to practice a sit, a stay, a look, manners around food, getting confident that I'm going to be delivering it and building trust in our relationship. Are you amazing? You're a good boy. Well done. We normally send 
Moose for a wee and a poo now because he's just had his dinner. So I'm just going to let him have a little bit of freedom in the garden, see if he wants to do that before we get rained on. So we're going to send you off. Do you need a wee? Have you done one? Let's see what he does. in a command, just each time he goes, he's hearing the word wee-wees. You can use what you want, it doesn't have to be wee-wees. Some people use toilet, some, um, some people use get busy. Whatever's natural for you, it doesn't matter, as long as you're consistent with what you do. So sometimes I give him a reward in um, the form of food, sometimes he just gets praised. But he's pretty much there now, three weeks in, and he knows what to do when I say the word wee-wees. He knows what I'm expecting of him, so all good. Come on then, we'll go in and uh, do a little bit of training. Let's go. Just a quick note on the clicker guys, just in case you haven't seen one before, this is what one looks like. They can come as little black kind of oval shaped ones as well with a little button in the middle. Essentially they all make a very similar sound, so it just makes this funny little metal sound. And that's what we get as all the dogs come running. Hey folks! That's a sound that we get which we associate with something positive. So it can be play, it can be praise, or it can be treats. And obviously in Moose, I'm using treats to begin with. So I generally use treats quite heavily as a form of positive reinforcement until around 13, 14 weeks of age. And by that point, I really like to have some sort of secondary means of telling the dog that they're doing the right thing. So whether that's praise or whether that's play, I'll be introducing those things slowly as well. So. That's the clicker, and I'm gonna talk my little kiddies through how to use it appropriately with the dog. It's very much focused on timing, so we don't want them to get that wrong, so I'll be guiding them to make sure they mark exactly the right behaviors that I want. The terminology we use is to tune or charge the clicker. So that means we give the clicker a meaning. So each time the dog hears the click sound, he sees his little treat or whatever we're using. You can also use play. So we can also get a toy out afterwards and have a big play session. This sound, when I click it, means that whatever he's done is the right thing. You can see how well Hogan is conditioned because he can see the clicker in my hand and he's drooling because he knows the food is there. In order to tune the clicker, charge it, each time he, he sees a piece of food drop on the floor and goes for it, we attach the sound when he eats it. That's all we did to start, okay? So drop food, click, drop food, click. Not asking anything of it. And we've repeated that 10 to 15 times. So his little brain, He's hearing this sound every time he takes a piece of food. All right, that's how the sound of the clicker starts to become positively associated. Bruce. Today's video is really all about trying to project how we can involve our children with our dogs successfully, how they can be part of the training and how with your support you can really forge a really loving, respectful relationship between both parties. Working with kids and dogs can be problematic but it can also be really, really rewarding. Puppies do bite and when children run and scream and get excitable, that only enhances the problem. We need to be looking at this from two different perspectives. So firstly, teaching the puppy that biting and mouth to skin contact is just not tolerated with human beings. And we also need to be teaching the children to be respectful of how the puppy copes with energy and their energy in particular. So lots of running around and screaming, the puppy is just not gonna cope with. So if we teach the puppy on one level to just sit and watch while children play, they can learn a really healthy relationship and a healthy outlook to that energy. And if we teach the children to keep that energy away from the dogs, or always notify an adult if they're going to be playing in the dog's vicinity, then again, you can protect the dog from them acting poorly or being reactive to the situation. So we're waiting for down, all right? So if he's learning it, we have to be really patient. Dog learns quickest when they work it out themselves, okay? So we let him do the behavior, say the word, down. 
click a reward. So he needs to work out well, what do I do to get my tree? What do I do? This isn't working. There we go, down. You see how he's standing up straight away afterwards? So we will build on that by asking him to wait a little bit longer before he hears the click. So we go down, wait. So he's getting to the pouring and the biting, that means he's getting frustrated. So when he gets frustrated, we'll take it back to simple, okay? So we just ask for a sit and reward the sit. All right, because if the dog gets frustrated, they don't, they don't learn very well. They start to get a little bit annoyed. I'm gonna reward that down straight away and then we're gonna bring in a wait, wait, wait. And then finish, good boy. to wait and come round in front of me. Wait. So we're going to get him used to waiting and now I want you to do a little wiggle. <laughs> Jumping around. Perfect. Click and treat. Right, the reason I want you to do that is because we want to teach him to stay really, really still when there's lots of movement from you kids. Alright, so we're going to do the same again. away but see he did that just there because he's, he's looking for treats now but if he was starting to want to come and bite you and get a bit excitable we're not going to use our voices I want you to send him away do you know how to do that and you're going to walk towards him and send him away so walk into his space into his space keep going keep going good boy good boy good boy stop see how he turned his head good boy ask for the sit sit lovely click tree well done so that's you owning the space in front of you because when he's a big dog he doesn't need to be thinking that he can come and jump all over you does he no. so you need to know and be confident that you can ask him to move out of your space if you need to so whenever you've had a training session it's really important that the dog gets a break so your training session should be short, kind of five, 10 minute periods. He's only 11 weeks old, so that's plenty. And we just do them periodically throughout the day. And I'm gonna pop him in his crate now so he can have a little bit of a sleep before we take him up to the woods. Are you ready? Good boy. Moose really understands his crate now. It's a nice little safe zone. He doesn't come bolting out of it. It follows hand signals and he waits for me to let him. So the door closing is always done really quietly. So it's not, it's not supposed to be a place of uh, upset in any way. So we've got a little long line to try that Gen Con have given us today. So Gen Con make an all-in-one uh, figure of eight collar um, that when used properly is brilliant for helping with uh, pulling dogs that pull but hopefully we won't need that with Moose because we're going to teach him not to pull from a baby so it's made from the same material as the figure of eight which is really lovely soft material it actually doesn't knot either it's 15 meters long so I'm not going to be using all of the 15 meters today but it's a really nice way of teaching uh, Moose to have a little bit of freedom but keeping him safe and also most importantly teaching him to recall when I ask him to come so we'll see how he gets on Just 
wanted to touch on the dynamics of bringing in a new puppy into an environment when you already have other established dogs. So we have Marley who turns 12 in November and obviously Hogan who is six. So they have had us and our little world for quite some time to themselves, just understanding our routine, how everything works and what the dynamics are all about. It was important for each dog that we make sure that we meet their needs. So for Marley, he really likes his own little safe zone. He likes to go off to bed early. He likes his quiet time and he certainly likes his own personal space. So it was important for me that I established that and I supported him so that he could trust me. So sending him to his bed and making sure that Moose didn't follow was the first thing that I would do. So he could still feel safe in his bed area. Hogan has done a lot of bed sharing. He's a much more passive dog. So it was important that I brought some fun and entertainment to their relationship. So I've trained them both together in the house and out of the house. That's not always an easy thing to do, especially when you're using things like clickers and whistles. Um, but I'm trying to do it the best I can because for both dogs, they really enjoy it and it really brings them together as a little new family unit. on toys trusty tennis ball I love my tennis ball um, and retrieval dogs love to play with tennis balls so I introduced that really early but I do keep a bit of a caveat with this so I don't just keep throwing balls for dogs that can be really really dangerous so if they're going out for balls all the time they can become obsessive over it and they also generally want to please lots so they'll keep going for the ball even if they're overheating or they're tired I also like my ball to have a lot of value so I use it to mark really good positive behavior. So it needs to really mean something. So this is something that gets tucked away and I only bring it out as and when I wanna do some training. We've got our Les Graham retrieval roll. This was designed by a friend and, and colleague. It's really, really simple, just made out of canvas and Velcro and the treats go on the inside pocket in there so the dog can't actually get to them unless they bring it back to you and you uh, deliver the treat. Not only does the puppy learn to hear that Velcro noise and associate that with you and something fun happening, but it also teaches them to bring the object back to you rather than run off and hide it. He's a Labrador retriever, so that means he's genetically wired to retrieve things. Border Collies are genetically wired to herd things because they herd sheep, don't they? So, for him, we want to use what we call his innate drive. So that's the thing that's instinctive that he really loves to do. When he does and he experiences what he's bred to do properly, he's gonna learn loads all at the same time and enjoy himself as well. So we'll start just by letting him good out. Out, good boy. We just let him learn before we throw it and make it really exciting. We let him learn there's good things inside, okay? So by giving it energy like this, we make it valuable. And anything that's valuable, if you want it, he's gonna want it more, okay? He needs me to be able to get this out because of the Velcro, he can't get in it. So the treats are hidden in a pocket on the inside. So he can't get them. So he can run off with it if he wants to, and he can go and play with it, that's fine. But the reward can only come when he brings it back to me. Wait, are you ready? Wait, wait. Oh, he's going to run off with it now, so we'll see. Lucy! Yay! It's only three! Oh. What don't we do right now? Don't run at him. Don't chase him. If we chase him, we make it even more valuable. He's got to work out that if he wants those treats in there, he's got to bring that to me. We'll call him again. Lucy! Yay! Good boy! Well done. Well done. I'm not going to snatch it straight away. I'm going to hold on to it. And then we'll go out and we'll just wait. Good. Yes, good boy. Very good. So we don't keep him all revved up and excitable. We keep him relatively calm. So what do you think he learned from that? It's like he has something that he shouldn't have, like a bit of plastic that he's picked up out of the gun and he knows like to bring it back. Absolutely, and that's really important. It doesn't matter if he steals this, does it? But what if he steals stones or the remote control for the telly or 
anything really that could hurt we want to know that what does he do he brings it to us doesn't he and when they're puppies they don't know to do that they just want to steal things and run away and if the very first response they get is that you chase them and add energy and make it scary or even exciting they're just going to keep doing it and do it more Thank you for joining us everybody, hope you enjoyed Moose's little journey so far. He's 11 weeks old and currently weighs nine and a half kilos or thereabouts. We are on a lovely journey for him learning to do some gun dog stuff. He's brilliant with the kids. So we're just gonna keep working every day on his recall, on his whistle training, just to make those habits for him. But hope you've enjoyed his little journey. Thank you for joining us. And if you like what you see today and you wanna see some more, what do we do? Like, like and subscribe. subscribe. Say bye. See you soon!